Hey everyone, this is S and Pratt, and today we're gonna do a little bit of a different video. You won't be staring at my turbo normie face as usual. Recently, one of the most valuable cards in the hobby was lost or stolen in the mail. This is a record that you don't wanna hold as a buyer or a collector. It's an absolute nightmare for everybody involved. So what I'm gonna do here is give you some history and context on the card itself. We're gonna talk about the actual sale. We're gonna talk about what happened after the sale the shipment or the lack thereof. And then also we're gonna talk about what the buyer plans to do moving forward. Now, let me preface this by saying both buyer and seller, I know both of them very well. They did everything they could to make this as above board and legitimate as possible. They did everything and then some to try and rectify this situation. It is entirely the fault of either USPS or the New York Air Max shop and ship company. So this card right here is one of the rarest and most valuable in the hobby. If you aren't aware of its existence, it's the 1999 number three trainer trophy card from the Super Secret Battle. Here's a quick breakdown on the rarest and most valuable cards. Pretty much a top-down hierarchy, starting with the single most valuable Pokemon card in existence, the Pikachu Illustrator. Then you have the 1997 Pikachu Trophies, the first ever trophy cards awarded. And then you have the SSB and TMB cards. These are very similar in my opinion. I think of them as cousins or perhaps twins. They have similar identity, similar rarity, similar release. So the term trophy card refers to the release of each card. You can see these Pikachus right here holding a trophy for first, second, and third place. These were given out at the first tournament to the first place winner, second place winner, third place winner. That was literally the only way you can obtain those cards. They're given out either in lieu of a trophy or with a trophy. If you got first place, you got this massive trophy Pikachu right here, then second place, silver, the silver cup, and then third place, you have the infamous, cute, little, adorable third place Pikachu. So the card we're gonna look at here, it's a similar release, first, second, third. This is the exact art. This is the exact card with the exact serial number and exact grade and hollow pattern. Again, this was only awarded to the third place winner at the Super Secret Battle. Also, here's some other information if you want to use your futuristic Google Translate app. Hover this over. You can translate it to English or your desired language. Just some background information on the tournament, some screenshots of the competitors, and that ridiculously nice banner right there. I'd pay a ton for that banner if someone could find it. Uh, but there you go, just some brief information from the Pokemon Bible on the actual tournament. So this card is just hands down one of the rarest and most historic in the hobby. You don't have it in an attic upstairs. It's not in your shoebox. It wasn't something you casually stumbled upon in the 90s. You literally could only win this if you got third place at this tournament in Japan. So because of all that historical value, rarity, and grade, this sold for $60,000 back in August 2018. This is the exact sale information right here. You have the lot number. In fact, I have the barely clinging to life auction from eBay uh, because it's about a year old now. You don't have the photos anymore. Oh, there you go. Got a nice little shot of the back of the card. But this was the exact auction. You can see the eBay item number right here matches the same for the PSA website. This is actually all live. You got this thing right here bothering me in notifications. This is all live. You can see I hover over the URLs. You can copy this link right here and check it out for yourself. There's the lot number. There's the sale price, August 2018, start number, everything there right in front of you. So since then, what occurred? The seller shipped this out, USPS, Register mail, I believe it was $50,000 because it was a maximum allowed insurance shipped out to the New York Air Max shop and ship location. Now, this buyer is overseas and, you know, for domestic buyers, they're like, okay, what's a shop and ship? Why do they need to send it to another location? GSPS is the bane, or GSP is the bane of international buyers existence. However, it really has streamlined online commerce. So how it works, I don't use GSP myself. But if you do, it's sent out to a middleman location. They repackage it or, and or put another little label on there. Then it's shipped out to its final destination. That's what occurred here. It was sent to Aramax, fully insured, signed for, with a bulk lot of 100 hundreds of other items, and then never received. That was its last update. So it's stopped in New York. Who knows what happened then? My guess is because of the 
immense declaration on the package. You had some scumbag triple X raffle master 420 who saw that between their smoke, their vape, and they thought it was a good idea to steal it. So either you have absolute negligence and incompetence of the package is lost, or you have the other side, absolute low life scumbag who decided to steal this package. Ultimately, it never arrived. And since then, the buyer has opened a private investigation. They are pursuing legal action. And they are also offering a $1,000 bounty to anybody in the community who can provide information to locating this card. So if you can provide information to locating this card, free $1,000. Also, if this video somehow is shared to the individual who has the card or whoever has it or someone they know who has it, you cannot sell this card publicly. It's not even a good scumbag move to do. You know, if you try to, if Raffle Master 420 talked to Charizard Baller 69, they try to put this up as a raffle. It has a certain number right here that's registered. Moreover, even if you want to crack it out, there's a unique hollow pattern. There's a unique centering. Also, if someone wants to crack it out and send to PSA, I will be pinged immediately when that card goes through PSA, immediately. Even if someone wants to go the route and try to hide it from me, I am like Sauron in this hobby. Everything funnels back to me. So at the end of the day, this is going to be like stolen artwork. It's one of those things that you just cannot publicly sell. It is something I don't even think you could sell at all. And even if for some reason it does, even if Raffle Master, Charizard Baller 69, Scumbag Pratt put all their heads together, form the Triforce of absolute toxicity, even if that happens, the buyer is still legally entitled to the card. So if there is stolen artwork, if you go into the Louvre right now, you grab the Mona Lisa and try to flip it and do you know a million slots with $100 each, the Louvre is entitled to that painting, just like the buyer here is entitled to this item. There is no workaround. It is just completely pointless. It, whoever stole this or was incompetent to just drop it and it disappeared into the abyss, there's no end game here. There's no end game outside of doing the right thing, returning it. You know, I think at the end of the day, if this goes back, if the buyer can claim their item that they paid for, it's water under the bridge. You know, all they want is the card they paid for. Uh, the legal action is because the card is simply not in their possession. In fact, I've dealt, I, this buyer and I go way back. We're very close. Uh, we're, we've done deals together and we've had items well above this value, you know, in the six figure range that had attempted tampering. Uh, even in those situations, they had more than enough, more than enough of a case to seek punitive damages, to seek loads of other damages. And they didn't, they chose not to because they just wanted it rectified. All they care about is the card. All they care about is the collectible. They truly value these items. They want this piece. That's why they're willing to pay, you know, real money for it. You know, this month, this is above an annual salary. I think People forget that at times. Sixty thousand dollars is above the average annual salary, and you know, let me finish with this idea. I don't want to be too serious, guy, because I know it's not popular in Pokemon to you know take things seriously. It's really cool to be fickle and conspiratorial and non-committal, but this needs to be stated because I think a lot of people hide behind Pikachu. A lot of people say custom instead of fake. You know, a lot of people spam keywords, shield bid, and you know, constantly maneuver and slither to the grass. This is a felony. Not only is it a felony for the dollar value, it's literally stealing mail from the federal government. You're double dipping. I mean, this is a double stuff felony here. It's not exaggerating. That's just objectively what it is. So at the end of the day, I think this is someone outside of the community, outside of the hobby. I think they saw the package. Uh, of course, it's speculation if it was just mysteriously dropped and disappeared and, you know, either it's extreme incompetence or it's an actual felon. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think someone saw that opportunity or what they thought was an opportunity and they saw the value and, you know, it disappeared. So that's what I have guys. Again, thousand dollar reward for anyone who can provide the information to the location of this card. This is very unfortunate. Uh, I tried to stay calm about it, but please guys, if you can, if you know anything about it, let me know, hit me up, throw something up on E4 tag me, just let me know. And we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. So there you go. Very unfortunate historical situation, but let me know your thoughts. And that's pretty much it guys. Till next.